Today, we move on to safety and innovation with our first speaker from Concrete Canvas, who are one of the headline sponsors for this event. Um, Darren Hughes is the speaker. Uh, for over 20 years, he has been working with innovative UK manufacturers to introduce disruptive technologies to a worldwide audience. Darren is the International Business Development Manager for Concrete Canvas in the UK, having joined them in 2012 to develop their channel partners around the world. Darren, over to you. Thank you for the introduction, Margaret, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. And to the Stop Expo and Tank Storage team, uh, magazine team, for organising such a great event. Um, today, uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for the second day of the Terminal of Tomorrow event. My presentation will take a look at a new material technology called Concrete Canvas. And we'll start by looking at the invention itself, and then we'll move on to um, how this was adopted, um, both in the UK and then, and then later worldwide, and then how the company has grown behind that, so a bit of a background of the company. And then we'll finish off by looking at its uses in application, with, with a real focus then on um, the petrochemical sector and, and specifically then downstream tank storage. Okay, so we'll start off um, by looking at the material. So what is concrete canvas? So concrete canvas is a flexible concrete impregnated fabric that hardens when hydrated to form a thin, durable and waterproof concrete layer. So in essence, it's concrete on a roll. And hopefully you can see in, in the small part where I am here, um, I've got one of the soft samples here. So you can see it's made up of four different components, really. So um, on the top surface, we have um, a hydrophilic uh, fabric surface. So the water is going to be absorbed here and taken into the material. On the back side, we have a PVC layer that then is going to create some impermeability, but also um, stop the water then just washing straight through the material. And then in between, we have um, a three-dimensional fiber structure that is going to have a dual purpose. So when it's unset, it'll hold all the powdered um, cement material in place. So even if we install it vertically, um, we won't get any slumping. So we have the same material here as here. And then it also provides then a reinforcement once the material is set. So as you would see, you would simply lay it into the ground into a, a channel or on a bund lining or under a pipe track and then spray it with water, and then the next day you have concrete. So again, like I say, with the, with the fibers inside, you have a very strong, um, thin concrete layer. Okay. If I just go back on that a sec, um, just to point out that the, the presentation slides will be made available to anybody that's interested, if you just contact the, the Stock Expo team, and you'll notice through the presentation there are some hyperlinks um, with some animations of the material in use and some videos, but for the presentation today I've chosen just to show you some of the slides, but obviously those are available, and there are, there are many more um, videos, animations, and marketing collateral on our website and across all social media platforms. Okay, so if we look at the material, as I say, it's in essence concrete on a roll. Um, so it's available in a number of different formats and variants. Um, the most common, I would say on the left, are the bulk rolls. So here you can have up to 200 square meters of concrete on a single roll and delivered on a, on a single pallet. Um, so very good for large scale applications. Um, it, where you have more logistical limitations or where you can't actually get that size of pallet to site, um, we also batch it down. So in the center, you'll see the man portable batch rolls. And th these are quite good in, like I say, in areas where you can't get, actually get um, logistical, um, well, where you have logistical limitations, where you can't get um, a truck or heavy lifting equipment. And there are actually projects where they, they've carried this to sites. So you can just put these batch rolls in the back of a four wheel drive truck and actually drive them to the project site and deliver concrete on site there. So very good and very flexible and enabling technology. And then finally, we have the wide roll format where we can do up to two or three meters wide 
So again, very good where you have larger scale channels or larger projects. So it gives us better efficiency in terms of the delivery of the product to site them. Okay, and if we, we just start and have a look at um, how this um, can be effective and how efficient this is. So if we compare the logistical footprint, so as I said, one bulk roll of our material can provide up to 200 square meters of concrete, which is the equivalent of two 17 ton ready mix trucks. So again, this is a very powerful um, statement and an image when you look at it. So if you translate that, so if we provide 20 pallets on one truck, you replace in 40 truck movements to a site. So again, what, what we see in the UK and certainly through um, the rest of Europe is that truck movements on civil projects now tend to be considered and planned in when, when projects are designed. So again, this provides a, a, a very good um, application in terms of how the, this can um, be powerful when, when designing these projects. Okay, we'll now move on and have a look at the um, properties of the concrete canvas material. So it has been well qualified over the years since we've been producing and introducing this material. Um, so generally to BSEN, so European standards, and also to ASTM, American standards, as well as many others that we've, we've picked up along the way, supplying into um, various markets. I think the material has been supplied now into over 85 countries over the world. So I won't go through all of these in, in detail, just pick up a couple of the key points. Um, the first one being just to talk about the strength of the material. So it has a very high um, early strength in materials. So it will achieve um, around 50 megapascals of strength, of compressive strength in just 24 hours. So that's why we can consider it to be a working product um, after just one day in, in setting. And then as with all concretes, it then um, gains strength over time. So after the 28 day period, it actually achieves then 80 megapascals of strength. So very good in, in terms of its application. And then also when we consider um, that this product is mainly for erosion control, then the abrasion resistance is always very important as well. So here we have over seven times the abrasion resistance that you would see with a typical um, Portland cement. So again, very good in terms of that, in terms of its application. And then one of the other interesting things to point out, and certainly when we look at this material for the petrochemical market, is its um, chemical resistance. So again, we've done um, soak testing for various hydrocarbons and has good uh, general resistance against most hydrocarbons as well as acids, alkalis, and then again, importantly, when you look at this material being installed in the ground, it has good sulfate resistance as well. So again, very good in its application. And then you'll notice there, I'll talk about it more on the next slide, you'll notice the free thaw um, resistance. So we've done cyclic testing of the material to over 250 cycles of free thaw, soak, dry, and heat rain. And this gives us then um, a design life of in excess of 120 years. And then this was recently certified by the British Board of Agriment. Um, that was, I think, in 2019. And then we also have a C mark for this material technology. And as a, as a company and the factory here in the UK, we have ISO certification for everything that we do as well. So again, I've, I've briefly skimmed through these. It's probably the, the less interesting side of, of um, the material and what we're going to talk about today, but certainly an important point. And when you look at the credibility of trying to introduce a new material into a construction market, these things are very important. And again, all of this can be found with backup information on our website and across our channels. Okay, so before we move on to just a bit of the background of the company and actually the interesting stuff, which is how we look at how this can help us in what we do, um, I'll pick up on some of the key um, user benefits of the material technology because it gives a good picture of, of what we're really trying to achieve here. So the first one is the, um, the speed of installation. So as you can imagine, if you're coring um, traditional concrete or spraying concrete into a project, this is very time consuming. It can be very messy. You have a lot more material 
Um, and generally, you'd have to make a formwork um, to pour concrete. So the ability to actually do this, um, just like laying a carpet, you just roll it out and peg it down and spray it with water, means that we're traditionally um, much, much faster than alternative technology. So generally 10 times faster or orders of magnitude faster. So projects that would be planned to be done in weeks, we could do in days. And similarly in days, we would be doing in hours. The next point is the ease of use. So the material has a low, low logistical footprint, as I've mentioned. It's also very easy to use. So there's minimal training required. We don't need specialist contractors to install and deliver this material. And then it, because of the way that we control the internal space of the material, we don't then need to measure the water. So you know we're not gonna get the water to cement ratio incorrect. We just add an excess of water and the material sets correctly. So we could even take the sample that I had, put it in a bucket of water, and we know that it'll set correctly to our specifications, what you expect on site. And this also has a double benefit in that we can actually install it in the rain. So again, it, it, it's very sunny here today in Wales, but it's not always like this. And um, I think we see the same through a lot of countries where in rainy days, um, traditionally they wouldn't use concrete, Whereas with our material, this is a real boon because we can install in rain. Um, so yeah, it's a very good additional point that we can make with the material. And thirdly, um, if you combine these points, if you think of um, the lower logistical footprint, less labor, faster, um, less heavy plant and equipment, it becomes then very cost effective and efficient to use this material. So generally, you know, this does vary country to country depending on the labor cost and the cost of traditional concrete. But basically, you know, in, in most countries, we can be um, very cost effective. And that's um, really demonstrated by the number of countries that we export to and some of the countries in the world with the lower la lowest labor costs and also the cheapest concrete in the world, we can still successfully um, export this material there. And then finally, um, we look at the eco-credentials of the material. So the very um, basic and easy to understand um, credential is that we're replacing 100 or 150 millimeters of poured concrete with just a very thin layer, so five or eight millimeters of concrete canvas. So instantly you get material savings. So less concrete, less embodied carbon. It's very, very good for the environment. We also have the transport efficiency that I pointed out earlier. So one pallet is equivalent to two trucks of ready mix concrete. And then also in terms of the type of cement that we use, it's a very eco-friendly cement. So it has a very high alumina content. It has a very low washout rate and then hence a low alkaline reserve as well. So if you're gonna have to use concrete, this is an eco-friendly way of doing so. Okay, and then as I mentioned, we'll move on to the next section and look at the, the, a bit of the history of the company and again, the growth that we've seen over the years. Um, so the company was formed in 2005 by the present directors, Peter Brewin and Will Crawford, when they met studying um, an industrial design course at Imperial College in, in London. Um, in 2007, they relocated the business to South Wales, looking for um, their first factory and headquarters, if you like, to start um, with their development of this material and another product that they were starting to look at. And then in 2009, following the development of the production line to make this material technology, we started then in the markets that we see now with volume production of concrete canvas. Then after some very early export success, as, as you see, this material was very interesting to many people around the world. Um, so by 2012, then, we were already exporting to a number of overseas markets. And we actually signed our first um, licensing agreement with Millican in South Carolina for the US. And then they had their own production line. So it was our first overseas production plant making concrete canvas um, for, for their market there. And then from this, two years later, um, again, with continued growth, you know, sometimes doubling or even trebling turnover at that point, um, in 2014, we were awarded um, by the Fast Track 100 
and we were actually the second fastest growing manufacturing company in the whole of the UK. So again, a really good achievement for us at that time and a demonstration of the growth that we were seeing. And we also, it was an important milestone because we also actually calculated that we produced over a million square meters of material by that point. So a very, very good year for us at that time. And then for the following few years, we again continued growing, growing our markets, our applications, where this material could be used. And then in 2018, we actually um, ran out of space in that current facility. And so we, we purchased the new headquarters um, where I'm sitting today. And um, this gave us the capability, you know, it was much, much larger, had much more, you know, many more facilities. And it gave us the ability to actually be in a position to quadruple our production capacity over time with new production lines and again, improve our research and development facilities and our labor laboratory facilities for a lot of the testing that we carry out. And then to the present day, um, <clears throat> obviously from 2019, we've largely been focusing on research and development and new product developments and material developments. Um, we spend over 25% of our turnover each year in this area, you know, we take it very seriously and see it's an important part of our future. And we've used, obviously, it's been a tough year the last year, and we've, we've been lucky in that we've managed to maintain our turnover with, with all of the various markets that we, we deal in. You know, we're, we're quite spread. We don't have all our eggs in one basket, if you like. Um, and we've also used this time to rationalize where we are with developments and increase our headcount in terms of the R&D um, and laboratory staff. So I think this was actually seven people that we've employed during um, the, the period over the last year or two. So something that we were really putting a focus on. Okay, and then in, to finish off this section, like I say, a very brief look at the, the business and who we are, where we came from. Um, I've just put in this, this one slide. Obviously, there are, there are many other um, sources of information looking at um, where we are around the world and our worldwide partners. Um, this is uh, one of the resources on our website, which I thought would be nice to show. It's actually an interactive project map. So each of the gray dots that you can see is where we've had approval to case study one of the projects that we've installed. So you can see from this, just in terms of our global footprint, you know, we're in um, pretty much every continent. Um, like I said, I think shipped to over 85 countries. And we have over 60 active um, distributors all over the world. So it's very nice if you actually go and see this on the website. You can click on the grey dots and look at then projects that are installed in your country. And also there's a very nice feature on the website where you can actually um, look at then, you can filter out projects. So we could look at, for example, just petrochemical projects in various countries. Okay, and then the interesting part, I think, the you know the final part of my presentation is going to look at um, the use and application of this material. So, concrete canvas, as, as I've mentioned, you know, we we're we're not just in um, the petrochemical or oil and gas sector. We also have a lot of business in with civil infrastructure. So, for road and rail networks, with utilities companies. Um, so again, anywhere where you're protecting infrastructure from, from erosion. And then also in the mining sector. So again, there's a, there's a lot of business. So they generally spread around a third of our turnover in each of those market segments. Um, but today, again, for, the, for this conference, we wanted to be quite specific about what we were going to, to look at. Um, so the examples that I'm going to show and what I'm going to focus on for the second half of the presentation is really based around the petrochemical sector. So we, we first got introduced um, to this market, I think it was around 2013. And you know, none of us in terms of our backgrounds had any experience here. But I think the material really spoke for itself. And that's how we could see people actually come into us wanting to use our material. And if you think about the benefits of having these type of materials, they, they fit so well in terms of the environments that they use and the applications that they can help. So if you think of the, the speed of installation, 
um, the minimized contractor burden on site, um, the installation methods that can be used um, in a very clean and simple and efficient way around sen sensitive infrastructure, and all of this with materials that have very good natural resistance to a lot of the chemicals that are being used on a daily basis or stored on a daily basis here. So again, it, it tended to fit very well and it was a very easy job for us then to introduce material into these markets. And then if we focus in even more and look at then, so rather than looking at um, upstream or midstream applications, if we look at specifically where concrete canvas can be used on a terminal site, we have a number of different applications that the material can really um, help with from secondary containment bund linings or dike walls, tertiary containment lagoons, <coughs> excuse me, and um, fire water lagoons or pits, um, reservoirs, pipe, tra pack, pipe track protection, um, so where um, we're, we're using the material for weed suppression, um, simple drainage channels for erosion control, and even under the tank lining. So again, where you'd use a membrane for impermeability under a tank lining, our material can be used instead of that as a protected layer. So again, many, many, many um, applications that the, the material can provide and um, benefit for. So we'll start having a look at the different types of case study. And I've kind of split these to provide a good selection from around the world, from different regions. So hopefully, I know we have a very international audience this morning, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to show something in similar conditions um, that you'll see in your areas. So the first application is in um, Saudi Arabia. So this was for Saudi Aramco at the Yambu refinery. And it was installed back in 2016, so around five years ago. And this was a very um, simple um, channel lining application. So the, the, the road is at risk here of um, being undermined by erosion when they have the rains there. So it does, doesn't rain very often, but when it does, it can be quite heavy. Um, so there was a, a pre-existing concrete channel there, and we lined this because it was cracking and spalling over time. And then, as I say, at risk of undermining the road. So again, it was a good early example for us. And one of the, the early projects we did with Saudi Aramco and now they use our material for many, many more projects each year um, since this first demonstration that we did with them. Okay, and staying in a similar region, um, this is a project we did in Kuwait more recently. So after a, a visit I made there in 2019. Um, so again, this was um, being on site, you know, while they were actually installing this. We got a lot of feedback from the client. Um, again, these areas where it doesn't rain very often, but they do get heavy rains and, and a typical rainy season that can flood these areas and then put their production um, facilities at risk. So again, it was very time um, critical that we delivered this project and installed it in a very timely manner. So again, that ability to do this in a matter of days rather than weeks or months was critical to their selection of concrete canvas. So again, the first major project that we'd done with this national operator in Q8, um, and you know, and, and a very nice project um, here, so nearly 10,000 square meters of our material installed for erosion protection of their channels and slopes. Okay, and then going somewhere um, far colder, and again, I had the, the pleasure of I'm spending a few weeks at this camp in um, Sakhalin in the far east of the Russian Federation. So this was a project that was done for um, a JV between Exxon and Nefgas, so ENL, at their Chavo um, onshore processing facility. So again, more upstream, but again, I think you, you'll just to highlight um, where it can be used for erosion control. So if we look at the um, the you know, the environment that we consider here. So it's essentially building a terminal on a beach. So you have a substrate that is classy sand. Um, you have the added um, complexities of having minus 40 degrees C for half of the year and four meters of snow loading on the material. So again, even if they could get traditional concrete here, 
it doesn't last very long. So generally these channels were unlined and then would just get washed out every year. And again, they were seeing erosion of their facilities and the buildings, the living quarters, the offices, and even the production environment. So again, this was a, a really good installation for them. Um, the great thing with concrete canvas is that we could ship it there in containers over the winter and then actually get it out as soon as the snow melted. All you need is to add the water and install it and you have concrete available on tap. So it was perfect for them in, in those conditions. <clears throat> okay, we'll look at some other applications now. So in terms of slope protection, so this is a terminal site in Oman that we installed this project back in 2014. And again, this, is, this was a good comparison because they were actually designing this project initially with um, sprayed concrete. So again, if anybody has used um, uh, shotcrete or gunite, it's a very messy process. <clears throat> it can be um, very time consuming. So to replace that with, with concrete canvas, um, was a real benefit to them. So they could keep the access road open during the whole installation, and then it was um, done on a much faster time frame in terms of doing that, and in a much cleaner way. So no um, rebound and mess everywhere on the road. So again, things that they want to consider when you look at the proximity to the sensitive in infrastructure and the tanks on site there. And again, with a similar theme, this was actually um, an oil pumping port in the south of the Russian Federation in Novorizhsk. Um, so again, a very nice project, over 6,000 square meters of concrete canvas installed. Um, and so a similar theme, you look at the sensitive infrastructure, um, nobody wanted to, to bring traditional concrete onto site and start spraying it on, onto these um, near vertical slope structures. Um, again, that were experiencing erosion and, and rockfall. So you can see here that the material has a very good drape characteristic. So even on a rough, rocky slope, it'll um, cover and sit well under those conditions and with that substrate. Okay, and I'm just going to skip through these quickly. As I said, you know, we, we will, I'm trying to cover quite a bit of application here to show everybody and just conscious of the time. So I'll just skim through. Um, we'll also um, look at lagoons and both in terms of lining lagoons and actually remediating old concrete. So this was an application um, done more closely to home in Schwed in uh, Germany at the PCK refinery. So this was an old um, concrete um, fire water lagoon that was had huge losses of water over time it was cracked and spoiled. So again, rather than digging out this old concrete and re-pouring it, which would have taken um, weeks and weeks to do this, we could actually go in and in four days and um, reline this and reinvigorate it with the concrete canvas material. So again, a very successful project for us done back in 2014. And then on a, on a similar theme, um, this was more closer to home, so in the UK. Um, unfortunately, we can't disclose the name of the terminal or the operator um, for this project, but we were allowed to case study it, which was very good. So this was chosen, again, over the concept of designing to replace the butyl liner and excavate it and use a GCL liner. Um, the concrete canvas was actually used um, instead of all that just to come over the top of the butyl liner to provide um, added protection and impermeability to the liner and again reinvigorate this tertiary containment lagoon. Okay, and then I'll skip on quite quickly. Um, we've all, as I mentioned um, on the previous slides, we also can be used for weed suppression under pipe tracks. So we, we have um, testing done for root penetration against the most invasive species. So again, a very good application here in the UK installed four years ago to protect the pipes um, that were being attacked by the vegetation um, on site here. So again, the, the typical solution here would be to use a stone, but again, with dirt coming over time, this can vegetate, so you get the same problem. So it provides a good, um, uh, installation here where it can be retrofit installed quite easily, dragged under the pipes, and then it provides good weed suppression and also vi visible leak detection to the pipe tracks. 
Okay, and I wanted to close today before I take any questions just by looking at um, bundlining, which is probably our biggest application um, sector in, in the petrochemical market. So again, this was our first foray into um, petrochemicals um, at a site, sort of a terminal site in the UK, close to London, that was um, being uh, reinstated. So here you have a picture of before we'd done the installation. So I think this is very common in, we see in Europe, that we just have vegetated earthen buns and providing the secondary containment. Um, so again, the design was to consider using um, a GCL, so a clay liner. But again, with this material, it needs to have compression. So then they would have installed, as you see on the right-hand side of the image here, they would have installed um, a geocell that would be filled with um, stone, crushed stone, or um, stone available on site. So again, it's quite bulky, so it would reduce um, the operating space in, in the tank area. So this would, so the height of the bundle would actually need to be increased. So again, there are a lot, of, a lot of limitations. It got us thinking back then about having the same level of impermeability um, with concrete canvas, but in a much thinner, more efficient solution. So obviously this could be done, and in this first example, we actually provided a capping layer to a clay liner with the geocell and, and the stone. So again, this still provides the weathering protection, the weed suppression, um, damage from at burrowing animals, so from rabbits they, they were seeing there. And again, it, so it's a completely maintenance-free solution that was done there. So again, it was a, a very good project for us in our first foray into bundlining. But from that, we started thinking about how we could, as I say, replace all of that to provide an impermeable layer with this concrete protection technology as an all-in-one solution. So hence, back in 2014-15, we launched and de or developed and launched CC Hydro, which is the same fundamental technology, but as I say, with a hydrocarbon-resistant, fully impermeable geomembrane integrated with this. And the advantage this gives us is to be able, as I say, to provide this full containment solution. So the material can be welded um, and tested, more importantly, with traditional uh, membrane techniques and technologies, so with a hot, hot air wedge welder, and then tested um, with pressure. So you have a double weld and a pressure strip. So these can all, all the welds can then be certified. And just to finish off, we look at one example of this. So again, quite close to us here, at a marine terminal in Milford Haven. This project was done back in 2017 for SEM Logistics. And um, so again, a very nice one of our first large scale bun lining in installations done with the CC Hydro um, product. And <clears throat> so we can provide this and we've completed many secondary containment bun lining projects with both our standard concrete canvas technology and hydro products. It's by far the largest um, application that we have in the petrochem sector, <clears throat> but we do take um, the confidentiality of our clients very seriously. And hence, <clears throat> one, one of the difficulties for us is not being allowed to mention um, a lot of the projects that we do do. Um, so it's good to say, I guess, when we speak at events like this, that a lot of the largest operators and multinationals around the world are utilizing this material technology um, to benefit their, their projects. And as I mentioned, there are many um, different applications on our website and across our media channels. So I would invite you to do this. And as I said, if you um, would like to look at the slides in more detail or find out more information from us, then please contact the <coughs> Margaret and her colleagues and we can provide those. And I can now take any questions. Great, thank you, Darren. A really interesting presentation. Um, so we do have some questions from the audience. Um, Abbas Ezat asks, how can we protect heavy chlorinated hydrocarbon storage tanks from corrosion problems and environmental impacts? Um, so I, I would say it is difficult to actually protect the, the tank itself. Um, we do have a couple of case studies where the concrete canvas material has been used to protect the primary containment, the tank itself. So I know of one in a, in a salt storage area, 
and there was another one more recently we, we've done as well. Obviously, the, the primary applications that we're used for are for secondary and tertiary containment. <clears throat> but like I say, pe people, you know, with such a, an innovative new material technology, people are constantly every, every week, month coming to us and saying, well, can I do this for it? So I would say the thing to do is to get in touch with us and then look at um, starting some trial projects to see if this can be done to help you. Like I say, you know, we, we, we can only look at, you know, and show historical applications that have been successfully delivered and where we've grown, but there's always scope for new markets and applications and product development, you know. So again, we have a lot of R&D um, going on here and looking at emerging markets and where we can really provide solutions. Okay, thank you. Um, Aaron van der Poel asks, how do you make the connections to and around the pipe penetrations if these go through the tank dikes or the walls? Yeah, so with, with the basic material, um, this can be done with um, adhesive sealant. So again, if, if we think of the traditional concrete canvas, this is providing erosion protection. Um, um, I guess the question is more aimed at the hydro product where you provide in a full containment. So this can be done as you would with a traditional uh, membrane um, product. So they would use then boots and weld um, uh, PVC boots around any of the pipe penetrations or sumps or, um, and again, how you'd integrate into then either a standard membrane that would be buried on the internal floor area of the tank or directly up to the tank itself. So again, you, you would consider this as just a traditional membrane. So you use exactly the same techniques and materials and um, installation methods as you would with a traditional membrane. Okay, thank you. Um, a question for France now. Patricia asks, in France, fuel penetration should be less than 10 to eight in tank pit floor. Would this product be okay for that? Yeah, I th <clears throat> so I think the um, it's referring to the coefficient of permeability. <clears throat> so it, it's um, so with the standard material, you achieve around the same as um, a GCL a clay liner. So it's around ten to minus eight, ten to minus nine meters per second. With the hydro product, again, we're we're getting the same as a membrane, so the same as HDP or um, a, a rubber liner. So this is ten to the minus twelve, ten to the minus thirteen meters per second. So again, it, there, are, there are different requirements. You know, it, it's um, quite an interesting concept because there is, there's no hard and fast um, regulation that we see um, where it would say the impermeability exactly that is needed. You know, generally they just say that we need to improve impermeability for the secondary containment or tertiary containment um, structures. So, but again, we have various products that can be used to cover both um, points really. Okay, thank you. Um, Eugene Timmermans asks, what happens if there's a fire? So what happens to the concrete? Will it break? <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, so it, it is, um, I think if, if the, the tank has um, failed and, it, and is on fire, then yeah, I think it's uh, a more serious issue. Um, so the, they, when, in terms of protecting and aligning um, a bun structure, I think the bun would still work in essence. Um, you know, you do have a concrete lining, but you still have the earth and bun um, beneath it. So I think in terms of the, um, the spill, it would still be contained, but our material would be um, then affected by this, so would need to be replaced um, once the situation was brought under control. Okay, um, and, and another question from the same um, participant asks, what happens when the concrete cracks, e.g. by settlements? If it cracks, it not permeable anymore. Yeah, so it, it's a big problem that we see, um, you know, when you look at that installation in Sacklin, and also when you look at a lot of uh, marine terminals, um, by in, in their the very design, they're built close to waterways. So you quite often, often have soft ground. So the material is far better than a traditional poured concrete because it has still some flexibility. So if you think about the material, how it's held together and how the aggregate is really a fiber, you know, polymer fiber structure, then it has a very good flex. So even though it is a hard concrete, you know, to the eye, it does have then a very good flex and the ability to micro crack. So then you have some unreacted species left and when it gets wetted again, it will self heal. So what we tend to find, and we, we've tested this as well, 
so it's on our data sheets, is that you can have very good movement and acceptance of um, substrate movement and settlement without then cracking. So you'll never actually go to see um, one of our installed sites and see you know, visible cracks in the material. It's all done by micro-cracking that will then self-heal. So it's one of the unique um, properties, if you like, of, of the concrete canvas material and our design. Okay. Um, Abbas Ezzet asks, for pipe racks, can we replace firefighting paint with concrete canvas? Um, I would say, so if, if there's a firefighting paint in terms of providing some thermal protection, then we'd have to look at then the thermal coefficient of our material if it would replace that. Um, so if I understand the question correctly, possibly not. You know, pe people have asked us about using it where in, in high-rise buildings where they use concrete for encasement for fire protection of, you know, steel girders, then the answers are no. Um, but again, it's something, as I mentioned earlier, with the earlier questions, it's something that's, you know, ev every opportunity is worth looking at. You know, I've spoken to so many engineers over the years on sites, both downstream and upstream, that just look at the material and you can see them leave the room for a minute when their brains are just working overtime, thinking of the applications it can be used for. So if you think that we started 10 or 15 years ago, just looking at lining drainage channels for railways, and now where we are, you know, it, it just shows how we're always open to listen to engineers and, and look how they want to use our material technology. So we can provide all the physical properties and data and testing. And then again, if there's something that really looks like it has an opportunity to work, then we can provide um, projects and on-site um, trials to see if that um, will work. Okay. Um, and then Richard Thorne asks, can you use this to cover pipelines underground and overground? Um, yes, we, so we've protected um, pipelines um, both subsea. So we've done one of those um, in the Middle East many years ago now, probably 10 years ago. We protected, um, or it was providing um, negative buoyancy and impact protection to a pipe in the sea in uh, the Middle East. Um, we've also got overland um, pipe protection case studies, so where you actually wrap the pipes in, in concrete canvas. So again, it depends on the exact application. We typically wouldn't be used to provide um, a uh, corrosion protection. So again, people have asked about that in the future. But in terms of impact protection and just into, you know, getting it away from vandalism, then those can be used. And we actually have a very nice case study um, in, again, in um, the Middle East, where we protected a bund that was actually built over a gas pipe for Gasco. Um, so again, it's a kind of a pseudo application where you're providing an erosion control to a bund lining, but is encasing a pipe. So yeah, very, very, various different applications. Right? Okay, great, thank you. 